Hello. Hi. Um, it's, it's been a minute. I haven't posted in quite a bit. So, I'm gonna include a little, a little, oh, is that a wasp? I'm gonna include a little timestamp. So, if you don't want to listen to this, you can just go ahead and get into the video. I'll put that here. So, this past year has been absolutely wild. I haven't gotten to really edit or upload any of my videos. I've been making some TikToks and like Instagram posts, but like that's about it. So I got a hysterectomy. And then two days after that, I literally bought a house. They had to send someone to the place I was living so that I could sign the paperwork because I couldn't leave because I had an organ removed. Anyway, so that was very interesting. I bought a house with my boyfriend and we've been like fixing up this house. It's 60 years old. It's really cute. It's got some cool stuff in it. I worked on costumes, but I just have not wanted to edit the videos. <laughs> oh, and then I also got my wisdom tooth out yesterday. So if I'm talking kind of weird, that's why. Am I one less smart now? I feel like I'm one less smart now. So I wanted to go ahead and get this video out. I made this costume back in, let's see, because I actually don't remember. I wanna say it was like September or October of last year, which was, last year was 2023. Yeah, October, um, October of last year. And yeah, uh, I got this costume done in like two weeks. And then this costume, um, he, uh, Buggy ended up winning um, best master at Anime Senpai 2023. Rip Anime Senpai. That was such a good con. <laughs> and it's gone forever now! I wanted to go with a very, like, femme version of Buggy. So I've got the heels. I've got the tum-tum out. Uh, long hair with tinsel in it because you can't go wrong with tinsel, okay? Everybody needs tinsel in their hair. I should put tinsel in my hair right now. I'm just gonna go glue some in with hot glue in my hair. Let's just go ahead and jump into how I made this dude. He's so cute. And I did make the anime version of him. I thirsted heavily, heavily over the live action version of him because mm, mm, so hot. To start, I used this coat pattern by Yaya Han, but I did adjust it a bit to fit the look that I was going for, so I lopped off the lapels. I ironed the pattern out first because that just helps your pattern stay flat, you know, instead of being all wrinkly and crazy. And then I traced out the pattern as to not destroy the original pattern. My mock-up was the lining fabric. So normally I do like to do a mock-up of all of my costumes, however, I was feeling pretty confident about my abilities in this coat because it was just a coat and I've made coats before and um, I just, I knew what I was doing. So I was like, I'm just gonna make the lining the coat. And if I f up, then I had enough fabric to make another one because I got this lining fabric on sale at Joann's and it's so cool. I'm obsessed with how it looked. I think it's just like some polyester. It's like a thicker upholstery polyester type fabric. Anyway, I just followed the instructions on this coat and then I make sure to press my seams as I go. This pattern is fairly easy, so if you are a beginner cosplayer or if you're just new to sewing, I would say this is a pretty good pattern. All of Yaya's patterns are really good, but this pattern especially, it looks tricky, but it's really simple. I made internal pockets so that I could keep my phone, my knives, my giant axe, my ponytail holders, extra noses, etc. in them. Once the lining was done, I moved on to the outer coat, which was this fleece, orange, orange fleece. I have a whole script and I'm messing up what I'm saying. Again, I make sure to press my seams as I go. And then for the sleeves, I always do like a loose stitch around the top of the sleeve itself. And I kind of adjust that to ease it into the armhole, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> and I installed the lining by attaching the lining and the coat with right sides together. And I leave an open space at the bottom to turn the coat right side out. And then I sewed. Welcome. 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 Then I hand sewed the whole shut. I used a fur trim to fur around the outside of the coat. This made the coat so heavy. The coat was already really heavy because of the fleece, but the extra fur on top of that, this thing was so heavy and hot. Anyway, I just hand sewed the fur into place. So really fun fact about this coat, there is a pin inside of it still. And I discovered that at a convention once because it poked me. <laughs> and I was like, what is this? 
and it was a pin and it is still in there because I cannot get it out so um, for the cuffs and the epaulets, 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 I don't know how to say that word. I used EVA foam and I made my own patterns for these by just measuring how thick and wide and long the cuffs should be. And then I put it onto 10, 10, 10 millimeter foam from the foamery. I love the foamery. Thank you, foamery, for your foam. I then glued them together. Oh! Oh, I'm not even on. <laughs> I wasn't even filming it. Oh. Wow. This about made my day. Then I just used some curved hat. Curved. We've got curved swords. Curved swords. Rounded. Some half dowels to add the little like gold detailing around the cuffs. And for the epaulets, made a little template and then I slapped that onto some six millimeter foam. And if you notice, there's a little V shape cut out. This is to curve Good. the shoulder piece downward to fit my shoulder better. Uh, and then I cut two millimeter foam to stack on top of that. For painting, I gave everything two coats of Plasti Dip and then I airbrushed them green. I also used a brown for a slight bit of shadowing and then I hand painted the gold parts. Those had like a couple of coats on them because gold metallic paint is very thin so you'll always have to do a few coats of those. For the shirt, I used this modified crop top t-shirt pattern and this four waist knit stretch from Joann's. Really fun story about this knit fabric. So I bought the knit fabric for Buggy's top and then my boyfriend was like, uh, when we go to Ren Fair, I want to be a pirate and I'm like, okay, sick. So then he bought the same fabric and that was like not, that was not discussed. We didn't know each other were gosh darn doing that. But then I was like, oh my god, you bought the same fabric as me. It was just crazy. Great minds think alike. Um, I also made sure that the stripes were matched up on the sides of the shirt or else that was going to drive me crazy. This was before I got a serger. I have a serger now. So um, they, <laughs> I zigzag stitched everything and then I kind of like rolled the hems. It's not as clean as it could be, but uh, I think... Um, I would remake the shirt and surge everything. I just, I just want to surge everything. Surging just fixes everything, okay? For his obi, I used this beautiful emerald green knit fabric. And I used my boyfriend's obi that he used for his Soga King cosplay for reference. And it is just a, so complicated. It is so complicated. It is a rectangle. I'm joking. It's not complicated at all. It's, it's literally just a rectangle very long rectangle because you gotta like wrap it around i think i wrapped it around me twice and then i like tucked it up and rolled it a few times i did use a stretch knit fabric I, I wouldn't do that again i did put interfacing in it so that it wouldn't be stretching anymore but i just really like the color of it and i like the texture for his pants i made this pattern that i traced from a pair of really comfortable baggy pants that i have they're kind of like hakama pants they're so comfy and I just slapped that onto this minty fabric. Every time I wear these, I feel like a doctor. Like, I don't know, they're, it's giving doctor. I put an elastic waistband in because my weight fluctuates so much and I hiss it literally anything that doesn't have an elastic waistband. Get that non-elastic shit away from me. And I just slapped some bands at the bottom of the legs that just kind of sits on my calves or like above my calves and it causes it to poof out a bit. The pants have pockets too. I, I didn't put that in my script, but the pants also have pockets for extra knickknacks. And then because I'm extra, I added some fun trim and beading at the bottom of the OB. His hat. I'm really mad about this because SKS Props made a hat pattern the day after I made my pattern. Painstakingly made this pattern. It actually wasn't that bad. I just traced his hat. Like I took a picture of him and I traced his hat in paint.net and I sized it to my dumb head. And then I printed it out. 
Um, and then I put my printout onto six millimeter foam and I glued the sides together. So that was that, it was obviously really easy. And then I did have to adjust the height because this hat was like really tall. I wanted a slightly textured look on this hat. So I took some crumpled up aluminum foil and then I heated up the foam and then I pressed it in and that gave it a leather texture because I just, I didn't want like a, just a smooth surface. I wanted to have some, some bumps and fun. After that, I put a two millimeter strip around the entire top of the hat, inside and out and down the sides, which is really nifty because that hid my sim, my sims. <laughs> that hid my seams so that I didn't have to go back in later with some quick seal and fill them. I also printed out his skull so that I could have a perfect pattern and I traced around it and I added probably half an inch seam allowance because it sits like the skull itself sits on a black surface and then I put the scale, the scale, the skull pieces on a six millimeter foam and then I cut it out. I used my blade to score the teeth and I heated it up to open the cuts. And then I did some sanding around the bones and the head and everything just to round everything out a little bit. I gave it a few coats of Plasti Dip and then I airbrushed it orange. I also added that brown shadowing around the edges just to give it a little more depth. I also hand painted the skull and I painted his nose. The nose. I used two wigs for this, one for his ponytails and one for the main wig. I crimped both of them and of course I added tinsel, of course. Tinsel is really easy to add to wigs. You just put them through the netting and tie them off. I recommend getting a curved needle for this. It makes it a lot easier. Good. I glued some of that red striped fabric around the ponytails and then I added those into the hat with uh, hot glue! I threw in some little braids and such and then the hat was done. I also made this pattern for gloves a really long time ago and I use them often for really easy gloves. Do the turkey thing on your hand, you trace around it and then you add seam allowance and then you just sew them together. Make sure you do this with a four-way stretch fabric because nothing else will work and then you'll have a glove that is too small. And I also made some nails because again I wanted to do a very femme buggy. So I bought some blank nails and then I painted some red, some white, and then I added some fun accent nails with gems and stuff. For the shoes, uh, they're my favorite part of this entire costume, the shoes. First, I uploaded his skull and his name into the Cricut software and then I cut it out of just some spare vinyl that I had and I slapped those onto the shoes. And also these shoes were thrifted, don't they just slap? They're so cute. And I traced around the vinyl. I then peeled off the vinyl, exposing a perfect pattern for the rhinestones. I absolutely adore these. I used gem tack and uh, it's lasted quite a while. Several conventions later, they're still on. The gems have not budged. They will not come off. So this stuff is on there. I did do like a full coat over the gems afterwards as well to kind of lock them in place. But yeah, they have not budged. For his socks, I sewed some tubes out of some striped fabric. It stretches, so that was very easy. I 3D modeled his knives in Blender, and then I printed out four of them, sanded them, and then sprayed them with primer. I taped off the blade part and painted it a nice shiny silver, attached the handles, threw on some beads, and wrapped them, and then they were done. Well, everything was done, really. That was it. Two things I forgot to talk about. One was the bandana. It's just there are two giant squares with uh, the right sides of the fabric together. I sewed them, so it was like a big pillow cover, essentially. I just tie that to my head. The trim around the shoulder pieces, the epaulettes. It's a piece of trim hot glue to the shoulder piece, so that's it. Yep. The makeup, I don't have a script for this. I don't have a script for how I did the makeup, so I'm just gonna word vomit how I did the makeup. So for his bones, I actually 
went into Cricut again and I made vinyl templates and I stick those on my face. I outline it in black eyeliner and then I fill the white in with a water activated eyeliner that I have. For like the blue parts, I use blue eyeliner and blue eyeshadow and of course I put glitter on it. Gl I, everything has glitter. I don't like stuff being on my face, so the nose I wore like once. I did like a red lipstick on my nose, just kind of like at the tip. And I put some red glitter on that. And then same with the smile, I used like the same stuff. Um, and like I made like a clown smile and um, put glitter on that as well because everything needs to be glittery. And honestly, that is pretty much it. That's how I made everything. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think so. Even though I made this build almost a year ago, if you have any questions or anything, um, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will attempt to answer them with the little memory I have of creating this costume because I've created several since then so all of that just kind of escaped my head. <laughs> yeah, thanks for hanging out though and I don't know when my next video will be up. I've, uh, I have a Monster Hunter video thing that I have to edit still and then I'll put that up at some point but yeah thanks so much for hanging out and I will see you guys in my next video bye curved swords